Can everyone hear me okay? Okay. So, uh, howdy. Um, so thanks for coming. Um, this topic's in, you know, near and dear to my heart, um, finding information, because I feel like when I started learning Selenium, uh, it was really hard to find all the good relevant information, given kind of I started out as a beginner and didn't know much, and, uh, and it wasn't very intuitive how to actually make the path from there to actually um, becoming functional with the tool. So uh, this is a collection of, uh, this is kind of a two-parter, um, is a collection of the information that I think is reasonably relevant and also just giving you exposure to some things that are out there to give you a flavor. Um, and you know, my, with my opinion on kind of whether or not I think it's uh, worthwhile. Um, and then kind of a quick section where I'll filter through some of the things to help you discern uh, given your context, uh, if it's if it's a good fit for you or not, and then after that, I have a short little demo um, for what I think is probably the most important piece of information that you'll want to take away today. So, so let's go ahead and dig in. Um, so, everything I'm going to talk about has a link. Um, it's just this simple Bitly link. Uh, so it's Bitly slash se dash info dash and the number. Each item will have a number. You'll see it. So each of these uh, things I'm going to talk about, um, they're going to have a little heading. So I tried to group these logically uh, for you guys. So in terms of documentation and tips, so we'll start with kind of the obvious place that most people start, which is the Selenium HQ website. Um, it's a little bit dated, but there's still a bunch of good stuff there. Um, you just kind of have to get the hang of it to know how to navigate it and find what you need. Um, and I, I think it's worth mentioning just because it does have a bunch of examples in different languages, not just one specific language. So it's worth, it's a worth at least looking through. Um, so um, I think that in terms of the official site stuff for Selenium, the wiki is actually really, really good because it has um, a lot of the documentation that I've used over the years, um, like the language bindings for for every language, they're on the Selenium wiki. Um, and they're pretty robust. So it has a lot of just you know the basics and the good intermediate stuff, um, uh, at least in my experience for the Ruby stuff. I haven't done too much with other language bindings. So Selenium wiki is a good one. Um, and then there's uh, my tip newsletter, Elemental Selenium. Um, every week I publish a tip, uh, and it ranges from beginner up to advanced topics, um, everything having to do with actually writing Selenium code, dealing with proxy servers, um, coming up with a test strategy, um, and you know everything in between. Uh, so, so that's also available. Um, in terms of other things, um, stepping into blogs, uh, there's the official Selenium blog, and uh, that's um, that's kind of where news gets announced. There's not usually much in the way of uh, good tactical information, but when, when uh, you know, like when Selenium Conf was announced that it would be here, um, the big announcement was made here on this on this blog. Uh, anything to do with Selenium three, um, and uh, and so it's a good resource just to kind of keep abreast of what's actually happening in the community. Uh, next up, there's actually there's a lot of blogs. Uh, so I found somebody that actually aggregated all the blogs. Uh, or at least I say all in quotes because there's likely plenty more blogs that I don't know about. So, but this is a good place to start um, to get a sense of who has what blog, and it's specifically web driver blogs. Uh, in terms of forums, there's kind of the standard fare of things. There's a LinkedIn forum. Um, I tend to not pay too much attention to the LinkedIn forum um, except to go and try and answer questions, but I don't really feel like there's a good sense of community. I feel like there's basically people posting questions and not reading the comments. Um, so uh, I actually get a little frustrated looking on LinkedIn forums, but it's worth knowing about because sometimes there are some good nuggets of information in there. Uh, but most stuff um, I think people probably look towards is Stack Overflow. And Stack Overflow has um, something like 15,000 tagged uh, open issues uh, or open threads. and. Uh, I tend to go through there and try to find the ones that are 
unanswered or only partially answered or answered for one language and try to fill in the blanks. Um, and so I think that's a pretty good resource. Probably of the forums, that's the better of the resources. Um, there's also Quora. I mention it only because I have high hopes for Quora. Uh, there's some good questions out there that are not well answered yet. Um, so it's, low, it's on my list, it's just low on my list. Um, but there are some, some good stuff out there too. Um, so it's worth at least kind of getting you uh, exposure to it. So back to kind of more mainstream stuff for the Selenium project itself. Um, there's some mailing lists to know about. There's the Selenium users group on Google. Um, that's also kind of noisy, but it's, um, it's a good place to kind of go and dig for some information too. This is more of like a, if you can't find it on Stack Overflow, you probably could find it in the user group. Um, and then there's the developer Google group, which is more for actually extending and building out functionality and features and addressing open bugs and that kind of stuff. And then um, a little bit off the beaten path, there's the agile testing Yahoo group. And, uh, and that's not to say there's anything really tactical in it. There's nothing Selenium specific in this group, but it's a good grouping of people in the testing community. And it's more of like a philosophical approach and more of a strategic approach. But it's like all the kind of industry giants uh, that go to all the conferences and wrote all the books hang out in this, in this mailing list. And so it's a great source of kind of inspiration and encouragement. And uh, that's what I looked at quite a bit when I was starting out uh, doing testing. Uh, beyond that, um, this was all kind of online stuff on the left. And, there's some, some other stuff now that we dig into kind of the in-person options uh, or just meetups in general. So um, I started uh, this online meetup, an entirely online meetup called the Selenium Hangout. Uh, and I co-organize it with David Burns, uh, who is one of the core committers of the Selenium project. And, um, and so we basically, we hop on uh, Google Hangout like once a month, every once in a while. Uh, and we talk about a specific topic and we bring in people from the community to chat with them and we live stream it and then get feedback from people and questions and try to really engage with the community and answer and address any issues and that kind of stuff. Um, I, <laughs> I actually refer to it as the world's greatest meetup um, because it's everywhere all at once. Um, so it's worth checking out. Um, but beyond that, there's actually a ton of options for in-person Selenium meetups. Um, there's not any that I know of in India, which I think is a great opportunity for you to start your own. Um, there's a blog post uh, that Sauce Labs has on how to actually start your own, kind of a good guideline for things to think about, uh, how to source a venue, how to actually get uh, sponsors to pay for food and drink, how to get you know good speakers and that kind of thing. Um, so I definitely encourage people to, to do their own meetup. This, uh, so the Selenium Hangout is actually my third meetup I've ever organized, and it's been like the best thing I could think of um, in terms of uh, you know, stoking the fire of community and really engaging with other people around you and like learning so much so quickly. So there's also videos. Um, on YouTube, there's actually uh, Selenium Conf videos from the previous years, and I'm assuming this is where this conference's videos, <laughs> conference videos are going to end up. Uh, so it's worth looking at that too. There's also um, meetup talks. Um, some of them are pretty old, uh, and some of them are more recent. Uh, it really depends on if people tag appropriately. So I just searched on YouTube based on tagging and found like hundreds of meetup talk videos. So that's a good resource. So books. There are um, actually a good amount of books, and there's ones I don't know about or just learned about that I haven't had a chance to read, so I'm not even going to mention them. But the ones that I do know of, um, Selenium 2 Testing Tools. Uh, this is David Burns' book, um, which is the, this is the sequel, because he had one for uh, it was like Selenium 1 Testing Tools, which was probably for Selenium RC. So this is for WebDriver, and it is uh, a really good book. It's like the book that I uh, constantly recommend to people. It's, it's very comprehensive. Um, it starts from... It starts from soup to nuts. It covers, you know, IDE goes all the way up through till grid, um, and it and it has kind of all the best practices that I look for in, when I do test automation. So 
that's a good resource. Um, I believe his, his book is mostly Java. I say that because I think he also had some C-sharp code in there. But it's a good resource, regardless of the language, in my opinion. And then there's um, the Selenium Testing Tools Cookbook, uh, which I haven't finished reading. But from what I've read of it, I think it's a great book. Um, and it has a lot of good, kind of more advanced um, things to apply to your testing projects. Uh, then I also wrote a book called The Selenium Guidebook. Um, the one complaint David Burns told me when he actually published his book and got people reading it was that his book didn't teach people to program, uh, which that's a, that's a tall order to include in a book about Selenium to also teach someone to program. Uh, so you'd have to be crazy to try to accomplish that in a book. And I, so I did that. Um, so my book also teaches you enough, pr like the programming concepts you need to know uh, and as well as a test strategy and steps through the whole life cycle of building out, uh, starting from one test all the way to a fully scaled, parallelized cloud execution plugged into continuous integration. Um, so that's available as well. And then um, Selenium Simplified. Uh, this, uh, this is a good resource um, because it's more than just a book. Uh, he actually has several books. Uh, uh, Evil Tester, I believe, Alan Richardson. Uh, and uh, so he actually has Java for testers. He has a book for Selenium RC, but he has this more recent, more recently published set of videos, which are very comprehensive. So it's the closest thing I can find that's the equivalent of what my book is. But my book's in Ruby. His is in Java. So I think his video, his video course looks pretty promising. And then if for people that aren't um, aren't knowledgeable about Java, he has Java for testers, which is a good book to to kind of get people ramped up. So, so Selenium Simplified, and I actually think they sponsored lunch yesterday. So, so thanks for lunch. Um, and there's a new book coming out, which I'm super excited about. Um, so Dima Kovalenko, he uh, did the Selenium Grid talk and the Selenium Grid workshop. Uh, so you might have uh, already seen him or met him. But he wrote this book, uh, Selenium Design Patterns and Best Practices. And uh, I was a technical reviewer for the book. And I think it's a tremendous resource um, for both beginners and more advanced people. There's a lot of really good stuff in there. And his approach is just so spot on. So I think there's the last of this, um, which is worth telling you about, like where I think are the good things, um, uh, where you'll find kind of the real meat of the information that's out there. Uh, and so the Selenium issue tracker is, is kind of important, right? It's like if you ever start writing a test and you, it should just work how you think it works, and then it doesn't. Uh, it's easy enough to go into the issue tracker and kind of search around to see if there is a bug. Uh, and nine times out of 10, in my experience, it's easy to find, like, oh, there is a bug. There is an open issue for something. Um, and then if there's not, you can submit an issue. Um, but before you do, uh, I think it's worth reading a blog post from Jim Evans on how to submit an effective issue uh, and what that entails. because. Um, sometimes, most times, I guess it depends, but it could be something specific to your app, something specific to your setup, and this kind of helps distill that down to make sure that you're providing enough information to help the person who would look at the issue uh, debug it and be able to actually effectively fix and help, help you uh, actually address your issue. Uh, aside from that, the actual source code uh, on Google Code uh, has a bunch of stuff beyond just the source code. Um, like links to other things within the, uh, the project on Google. But the source code is kind of it's like where I like to go just to understand if there's a way to do something that's not easily understood through the documentation. Because the bindings are only going to cover so much. The bindings documentation will only cover so much. Um, but the source code is like kind of the single source of truth. But what I think is probably the most, the most important resource is the Selenium IRC chat channel. Um, it's where all the committers, a bunch of people who uh, actively work using Selenium, they hang out on this chat channel. And uh, that's where things about the project get talked about, where releases happen, uh, where people can go and ask questions of people in the community. It's like the single best place I can think of. It's like if you have a question and you're try, you know, frustrated trying to Google for an answer, you don't see something in the issue tracker, you're not sure what to do, you feel overwhelmed. You don't have to, because you can just log into the IRC chat channel. 
and just ask your question. And somebody will just wait, and eventually someone will answer your question and help you out. So, so these are all the resources that I know of. There's no way that I can possibly have a comprehensive list, but these are the things that I've looked at uh, that have helped me kind of along my way. And so to kind of help filter, uh, there's a, I, try, I try to look thing, at things through a lens of kind of like getting started and then people who are further on their way. So in terms of if you're more of a beginner in the getting started phase, that kind of help, there's a couple things that get filtered out here. Um, so like the testing tools cookbook is more, has some more advanced stuff going on. Um, you know, dealing with source code and issue tracker may not actually be something that you're gonna want to, to really deal with and then the developer group is clearly not something you're gonna wanna dig into. Um, but like documentation and tips, logs, um, a lot of the forums, those will be super helpful. Um, my guidance would be if you're gonna look to buy a book um, f and figure out which language you're gonna use and then pick one. Um, the Selenium 2 testing tools, Java, Selenium Simplify is Java, uh, my book and Dima's book are in Ruby. Um, I'll caveat that with, um, I think that the concepts um, and practices are kind of la are language agnostic. Uh, so the reason to get the book is to really see and get guidance on t uh, technical and tactical implementation. So um, other than that, like the videos are always a tremendous resource. Um, and uh, meetups are probably beyond that the, the next best thing. So if you guys have access to meetups or, uh, or want to start a meetup, I think that's a great one too. In terms of more intermediate to advanced, um, there's a few I want to highlight. Uh, I think that uh, like, if you're looking to kind of really dig in, the, the Testing Tools Cookbook would have some good, uh, some good stuff in there to kind of help up your game. Uh, the developer uh, group is, is a good resource. Uh, and then on my, uh, on my tip newsletter, I actually have a series of advanced posts um, that I'm, start, I'm slowly adding to. Uh, so there's probably only like a half dozen so far. Um, and then beyond that, you know, digging through the source code, going on the IRC chat channel. I feel like the IRC chat channel is a blanket for everybody. It's useful regardless of your skill level. So I just wanted to, before we kind of move on and get into potentially questions, um, I just want to close with just a quick little video. I'll show you how easy it is to connect to the IRC chat channel. Um, so IRC, uh, it's uh, internet relay chat. It's like an old school chat mechanism. And so there's a bunch of different ways you can connect to it. You can actually download a client um, and configure it. And, uh, the, or you can go through a web app to do it. Uh, the Selenium IRC chat channel is on the uh, Freenode, yeah, Freenode server. And, uh, and once you connect, it's just pound Selenium. Every chat channel starts with a pound. Um, and then ta-da, you'll be magically there. Uh, so this is just a quick video uh, of showing how to, there we go. So you have to choose a nickname. And then after that, you plug in the channel name. Uh, and this is just the one that comes for web chat. Uh, so plug in the captcha, hit connect. Because it does its thing. And this will auto connect you to the chat channel. And then after you're in here, if you want to see who broke the build, you could just type in who broke it, and it'll tell you Simon Stewart. So I think he always breaks the build. I think that's always going to be the answer. So, um, so, that's, um, so that's it. Uh, I, I would say that if I can just beat, beat one horse, uh, one piece of information over and over, and hopefully impart you with one thing that you're going to take away, and definitely do, it would be connect to the IRC chat channel and just get familiar with it. Uh, and like just keep that in your back pocket because that's like the, I think the most underused thing that's the most, most potent of all the things that you could do. Because um, the people in there will help point you in directions to help you find information as well. So um, it's been probably the single greatest resource I've found besides coming to this conference. So. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, so I will post the slides um, and tweet about it. Um, but I clearly think 
that there's things that I don't know about that you guys do. So if you think I missed something uh, I th or have just something you want to share, I'd love to hear about it. So I'd love you guys to get in touch. Um, so I'm going to tweet about the slides uh, after I post them on SlideShare. Uh, and then you can, you can email me directly. Uh, and you can check out my site where it has kind of everything I'm working on. Also, there's a link to my office hours. Every week I have open office hours. Um, so two hours a week, I set aside 30-minute sessions to hop on a call. Uh, so any, any questions about testing, whatever, you can schedule a time with me, and then um, I'll hop on a call and we'll talk about it. And if it's like, it could be pair programming, it could just be chatting about something, and that's it. I make myself as available as I can to the community, because um, I'm, I'm just trying to help as best as I can. So, so that's it. Any questions? Can you say that one more time? Sorry, I couldn't hear you that well. Oh, what? So, in terms of other testing tools? So, so the question is uh, how, is there any sort of resource that I know of that puts Selenium into a broader context? Um, I think that there's, like how it fits into like an overall strategy for tech. Um, I think that the best way you'll find that is like talks, like uh, Naresh's talk earlier today about inverting the testing pyramid. Um, so, so I don't think there's a lot of good resources about this, um, but I think it's a big challenge that organizations have. And given that you're a consultant, I think you run into these challenges too. Uh, but what, what normally happens is, yeah, companies want to just automate everything using Selenium potentially, and I think that that's very dangerous, or they see that it worked for this one case, so let's do it for all cases. Um, but having kind of an, a good understanding of what Selenium is really good at, um, and how that's like, when it's done in small doses, it's more, more effective and it's easier to maintain, and then it's slowly growing it over time. Um, I haven't found one killer resource that just says that, um, aside from, I mean, I, I write about it, in my book, and I write about it in my tip newsletter a little bit, talking about testing strategy and focusing on certain things to understand about your business and how these fit. But I don't think anyone's really nailed it yet. Uh, so it's just, I just kind of, I have experience to know how it works, but I don't, I have no resource to point people to, unfortunately. Question. Yes. Of, um, uh, oh, the, things, are you talking about the, the, the smattering of Selenium, the blog posts like the Adam Goucher would do? Yeah, so, yeah uh, it was like every, um, so, so your question is like, why are there not regular updates about what's going on yeah. in the industry? Yeah, so, there, so yeah, I think that, um, well, <clears throat> the Selenium community is just a series of actions by interested parties, and uh, the person who was doing that uh, took a full-time job that's very demanding, and so my, my impression of the situation is that it's just something that isn't getting done because he was the only one doing it. Uh, but I definitely think that there's, there's, there's value in doing it. Um, so it's just a matter of figuring out how to do it uh, and paying attention to it. So I, I could see it coming back. Um, but uh, for right now, the, the best thing, the, the, most, the closest equivalent is when we do a Selenium Hangout and we, we post the, the recap, the, the meeting minutes from that, plus the video. Um, so that's like, because we talk about general news when we do those, but we haven't been regular about those either, uh, just because like, like with the W3C spec, David Burns is really busy, plus with, he works at Mozilla, so he's pretty busy, and then with my travel schedule for conferences and whatnot, so. But it's, it's, it's a, it, those are lame excuses, so like, I think that there should be more regular updates. Um, so uh, if not the Hangout, then doing something like the Smattering, that would be a good thing to bring back. Yeah. What's, what would be deprecated? HTML unit driver. Oh, HTML unit driver. Okay. So the interesting thing is, how do you say, how do you keep us updated? What might go away over the future? 
so the question is, uh, how do we keep the community updated with what might be going away and be deprecated and so on? Uh, I, so aside from, um, I guess the blog would be one place that you'd potentially see that kind of news if it's a big change. Um, short of that, there's a change logs, and then there's State of the Union uh, that Simon does every year about changes. Um, I'm trying to think of, do you have any other thoughts, Jim? on the Google group. That would be the best place to find that information. Yeah, as opposed to being surprised when you download the latest and you're like, what happened? Uh, okay, yeah. Did that answer your question? Okay, great. Any other questions? You said you were going to ask a question. <laughs> Oh, the, so the Hangouts, uh, there's, there's no registration. Uh, your account to follow, and we'll, we publish the link there. Uh, and then you just hop on a YouTube live channel uh, and just watch it, and then you submit like feedback and <coughs> chat with us. We, we're thinking about different formats potentially too, um, but that's the, uh, that's the best place to go. Um, and then if people have questions, we have an email address and stuff like that. So, but it's, it's really lightweight. Um, so. What time is it right now? Uh, so the times that we typically do, uh, we try to, it, first off it has to both work for us, clearly, but um, we try to schedule it where it's reasonable for, um, probably not Australia. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so we, we do it at four in the morning our time, so no, I'm just kidding, and we don't usually. Uh, so we've done it typically where it works for like uh, West Coast, so like San Francisco all the way through to the UK. Uh, so it's like, it's cover at least that, that wide of a swath. Um, and then we've toyed with trying to do later hours that could at least accommodate 12 hour time differences. Um, so we're still toying around with it, and every time we just try something new, uh, and we try to gauge feedback. So, but the, the video gets posted after, so it's always available, and we always do the meeting minutes. And so if you go on the Selenium HQ blog, you can see all the blog posts from the last five hangouts that we've had, and, um, and then that's just, yeah, so it's always there. If you, so if you miss it, you get a recap. Yeah. Excellent. yeah. And what is the Twitter account that it's uh, So the Twitter account for it is uh, at Selenium Hangout. Selenium. Yeah, and so the link, the, uh, once I post these slides, you'll see it, but there's a blog post that describes kind of the whole format and the links to the Twitter handle and all that, so, yep. Okay, I guess uh, one more question? Or no more questions? Cool, all right, well thanks everybody. <laughs>